as a multiplication device. And we'll just keep going here. That's the small x. We'll do a case for the large x too in case somebody decides to do that. And the multiplication thing again. Oh, you know what? I screwed up here. At the end of each statement, you have to do a break. Now, a break just cuts out the switch statement and goes right to the end of it. Uh, s just in case uh, the user enters in the first the first case. Then you don't want to run through the rest of the cases. It doesn't make any sense. So, we want to break all these. Okay. And now we'll do the case... Okay, so we've got all of our case X X's covered, right? We're going to want to do the last one. Now, with this one, we're going to do a little bit of a different situation. We're going to introduce the if statement. Let's say if d second number equals equals zero. Oh, actually, I'll add in the curly bracket there. C out that is an invalid operation. And L. Okay, and then we'll do the closing for that and then we'll do the else, else statement else and then see answer see out the answer is we'll put the divide there and the divide there okay so that's pretty much it for the for the switch statement you just gotta put the ending curly bracket there uh, and then you gotta put the end oh no you wanna do a default I forgot about that okay so default is like if they don't enter in anything that's appropriate, you would go see out um, that is an invalid operation. And L. And that's all you have to do for that, and then you'll be doing a break again. Oh, and I forgot the break for the one above too, so don't forget that. Okay. So now that that's done. Excuse me. So now that that's done, we're putting in the end curly bracket for the beginning of the operation. And as you can see, in, in Dev C++ and Visual Studio, they're both, they'll are both they illuminate the ones that you're dealing with. So that's kind of helpful. Okay, now we're going to want to see if the person wants to do the program again. So let's go see out. Uh, would you like to start again? Yes or no. And we'll do that. And let's do a carriage return for that, actually. Uh, and then we'll go C in. C do again. And then another ending curly bracket, because that ends the do statement. But while... So we'll do while. We're still in the do while, though. It's, you want to do it right after. So let's say while do C do again equals equals and don't forget those brackets Y capital Y or that's what these two are the or statement so that's basically self-explanatory C do again equals equals small y okay so what this is here sorry about that so what this does here is if the user entered Y, it goes right back up to the top of the do statement and clears the screen. Now that's what system CLS is. If the user decides to do it again, you don't want to see all this stuff happen again. Like it w they don't want to see, or you don't want them to see what they did the first time. So it'll clear the screen back to please enter the first number you would like to use. That's what system CLS does. Okay, so now that that's done, we're almost done. If the user enters anything other than Y, so it could be N, it could be X, it could be whatever, you know, like the main idea is we want them to enter in Y. So we'll do the system pause. And return zero. And the last curly bracket, which goes all the way up to here. As you can see, it was illuminated there. Okay, now that should be good. I uh, just got to make sure all of our code is good. And it looks all right. We'll get errors if we uh if we've done anything wrong. Okay, as you can see, this is Visual Studio, so you're going to want to do without the debug. Build it. 
Oh, and I got a build error. We got one error. Uh, oh, where? What is? What line is that? We got a, an error with D second number. So we want to move down to where D second number would be. Uh, okay, you see right here, I accidentally put it in E there. So that was our error. I'm going to save and start without debugging again. Oh, and I got another build error. Oh, looks like I entered it. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> oh, I did it to all of them. Look at that. That's not good. Okay, that should fix the problem this time. Okay, we did get one warning, so I'm going to see what that is. Okay. Please enter the first number you'd like to use. And you can see the, the colors are good. Uh, the calculator is good on the top there. So let's go 12 plus. Oh, and we got a debug error. So we got an, ini an initialized local variable. Let's look at that really quick. Uh, I'm going to figure it out and I'll come back. Okay, silly me. <laughs> um, I forgot to input the D second number here. CN D second number. So that was, that was a pretty bad mistake there. But I mean that's what the whole point of debugging is, right? So let's see if, let's see if it worked out this time. Okay, we got zero warnings. Everything seems to be good to go, so let's test it out here. Uh, let's go 12. Oh, plus 12. Okay, the answer is 12 plus 12 equals 24. Would you like to start again? Let's press yes. So as you can see, it clears all the way back to this first section here. Uh, let's go... Oh, let's go 12 divided by 0. That is an invalid operation, as we uh, put there. So that's where the if and else statement comes into play. Would you like to start again? But then if you go 12 divided by 12, you get 1. So every, it, it goes through that if and else statement. It checks it. If everything's good, it does what it needs to do. Uh, we'll do one, a couple more here. We'll do, let's do 12 times. Oh. That's an invalid operation because 8 isn't a character. What about 12 times 12 is 144. Okay, now if you don't want to use the program anymore, you press no. And it's done. Okay, so that's my second tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And there will be more to come in the future, of course. Uh, this uh, tutorial needs to be viewed a thousand times before I make my new one. Uh, the first one was 500 and it'll go up each time. So keep watching guys. Thanks.